buying these altcoins could be like buying Ethereum at $80 in the last bear market. That is the price Ethereum dropped to at the Pico Peak bottom of the last bear market. It then of course went on to soar to new highs in the news cycle, putting in a trough to peak gain of 6,000%. There are other coins on the market today that could repeat such fantastic gains in the coming bull cycle. In this video, I want to talk about some of those coins, why I am bullish on them, what are some of the key metrics and fundamentals behind these coins that make me bullish on these coins. And of course, before we proceed, a quick note, I own the coins being discussed here. I'm not planning on selling those coins anytime soon. You also need to understand that altcoins are like super risky. You can literally lose all of your money. A full disclosure statement on risks and my portfolio is available below. Now let's get into it. The first coin is Avalanche. Now these guys have been super busy during the bear market. First, the news, the big things they've been doing, the fundamental stuff, right? And then some of the interesting stats behind them. Now let's start off with talking about subnets. This is a piece of technology that allows for massive scaling for Avalanche and is of itself something very, very bullish. But they also launched evergreen subnets, which are basically custom subnet blockchains for institutions. So a flywheel of value spreading out from the main Avalanche chain. By the way, the Fuji testnet for the subnets has already reached 400 subnets. That is a lot of damn scalability coming to Avalanche. Ava Labs has also launched Ava Cloud. This is a no code tool to allow go to market blockchain solutions to happen even faster and even cheaper for companies. They've also teamed up with Alibaba, the Alibaba massive, massive tech player, right? To launch the Cloudverse. This has helped businesses launch custom metaverses. Then there's the news from Circle. So that's the maker of the USDC stablecoin. Well, they've rolled out a native cross chain stablecoin transfer protocol connecting Ethereum and Avalanche, allowing for stablecoins to move back and forth between those chains natively. They also launched the Euro coin, so Circle Euro, on the Avalanche network as well, natively. And then there are, of course, the big news like the SK Planet partnership, which gives them access to tens of millions of people in Korea and over 90 thousand freaking merchants. In fact, the SK Planet subnet just launched and it had 100,000 transactions and 30,000 KYC users just on the first day alone. That's pretty big stuff, right? Now let's talk about some of the stats because Avalanche has been doing some pretty big things on chain as well. So how about this? Avalanche just hit a million monthly active users in a bear market. In a bear market, stats are improving. Then check out these stats right here, daily transactions. The last few months, have either seen twice that of Ethereum or on par with the Ethereum main chain. And by the way, that's being done at 145th the market cap of Ethereum. Daily active addresses are up from 25,000 to 85,000 in just a few months, which is one fourth the amount of Ethereum. It does, however, fall behind significantly when it comes to total value locked. Ethereum remains the big boy in this situation, though potentially it shows a big gap in DeFi when compared to ETH, which is, of course, an opportunity and a challenge for Avalanche to overcome. Now, for all of these reasons, I feel like if Avalanche basically keeps going in this direction, if they keep up that momentum, then they are moving in the right direction to be able to capture more market share. And more market share means more interest in the AVAX coin, more necessity for that to have uh, for gas fees and stuff like that. And thus, of course, higher valuations possible next cycle. At least that is my investment thesis. Now let's talk about Arbitrum. And I know, I know, Technically, this is still a major part of the Ethereum ecosystem since it is an Ethereum layer two scaling solution, right? And they do use ETH as gas fees on the network, but the stats behind Arbitrum are pretty damn hard to ignore. Arb has been pretty crazy, actually. Nar native Arbitrum dApps have really taken off. We've seen things like Radiant Capital absolutely popping off and many non-native apps have actually moved over to Arbitrum because that's just where a lot of users are going right now. It is the layer two to be on. We've seen Trader Joe, for example, go over there and it found big success by being an early mover into the Arbitrum ecosystem. And a quick scroll through the Arbitrum Twitter page shows an explosion of new dApps coming out all the time to the Layer 2 network. Circle has also teamed up to launch USDC natively on Arbitrum, which brings safer liquidity options and more liquidity directly on chain. And believe it or not, there is going to be a Layer 3 scaling solution launching soon on top of Arbitrum. I kid you not, I kid you not, that's crazy, man. Layer 2s, oh no, we're already into Layer 3s, man. Although the rise of Arbitrum has not been 
100% drama free, like the other day when it kind of ran out of gas and thus halted the chain for a few minutes. Whoops. <laughs> now look, anyway, this stuff happens, right? Now let's look at some key statistics here. Daily transactions in Arbitrum are almost at par with the Ethereum main chain. That's pretty damn impressive. In fact, sometimes it's over the Ethereum main chain, right? Some days we see it exceeding transactions on the main chain by as much as two times. And that is at one two hundredth the market cap of Ethereum. Daily active addresses are either at parity or slightly below Ethereum 2, which is pretty damn crazy once again, showing that a massive amount of users have flooded into the Arbitrum network. The user stats on ARB are crazy, and it doesn't even really matter that the token, the ARB token, is a semi-useless governance token. The market will value this based on perceived value. And so far, it has proven to be a pretty strong player. So I have been accumulating this at various points, you know, from $1.50 down basically. And I don't know what the fair value of ARB is, but I feel like it is probably a lot higher than it is right now. And that will probably do pretty well in the next cycle. Okay, before I break down the next few coins, I want to take a quick moment to tell you about Wealth Mastery. This is my weekly crypto investor newsletter. Each issue is packed full of what you need to know about what is happening in the cryptocurrency market. Altcoins, DeFi, charts, news, and much, much more. Join our over 75,000 weekly readers by signing up with the link below. And the best part, it is free. Yes, free, so check it out. Now let's talk about Injective, old mate Injective. They've been doing some very interesting things recently, some very big things recently, and they're back on my radar now. Injective has super cheap, super fast DeFi. They even have a gasless experience for users versus, of course, what can be sometimes very crushing fees on the Ethereum main chain. Also worth noting is that Injective is now settling blocks in under a second. Very impressive. Injective also has a perpetual token burn setup, much like Ethereum does thus making INJ a deflationary token. In addition to all that, they also have just launched their open liquidity program, which is basically a huge incentive program to bring more traders, more liquidity providers into their network. The Injective team has also been working tirelessly on increasing cross-chain liquidity and interoperability, part of which can be seen with the recent bridge over to the Solana network. And while Injective started off as really just a DeFi protocol within the Cosmos universe, it is actually becoming a very powerful blockchain in of its own right. There will soon be a big explosion of decentralized applications being built on top of the network with over 300 projects submitting and showing up at a hackathon recently. All of which makes me think that this is one of those chains to keep an eye on. Now look, I've been holding a bag of INJ for ages, ages. I've even taken profits quite a few times, including recently on the run up to 10 bucks. But the sell order I had in for this, I've actually removed it for now, and I'm actually going to uh, let the existing bag ride for a while and maybe even add a bit more while it is still under the radar, so to speak, and we are still in this bear market. And now let's talk about the Oasis Network and their ROSE token. Now this is one that I've been consistently adding to for quite a while. It got up to 55 cents in the last cycle, currently trading for, well, dramatically less, let's say. But this coin is one that I think has some very interesting potential for the next cycle, as it taps into so many of those big themes, has so many big backers behind it. And the biggest theme that I think is probably gonna really catch a lot of attention is the AI narrative. Yep, Oasis is a layer one blockchain and an AI coin. They have many partners that they are working with on key AI fields, and the creator of Oasis is Don Song, a computer scientist who focuses a lot on AI and who's even quoted multiple times in the founding documents of ChatGPT. Oh, and one of the companies that Oasis is working on that AI technology with, Meta. Yes, the founding company of Facebook, right? And they're also partnered with Google. Yes, the Google, the googly googs. Oasis is also working with big brands like BMW on privacy technology. Privacy is becoming more and more important overall for blockchain technology. And Oasis has this on lockdown because they have it natively built in using ZK privacy technology, which is widely seen as being the strongest and most reliable 
piece of privacy tech in the blockchain biz. Oasis also has a $235 million ecosystem fund, which is backed by some major players like Binance and many major venture capital firms. It's also insane to note as well that their ecosystem fund is almost worth as much as the current market cap of the coin, which is crazy. And here's what's even crazier. This thing right now, it's only trading at slightly above ICO price, which is why I have been buying it. But let's be clear, for any of these coins that I've mentioned today, there's a major glaring problem. They're not Ethereum. In spite of the high fees, in spite of the slow upgrades, Ethereum is still the king of crypto smart contract platforms. The moat it has built around itself is huge. The competition has a lot of work to do to try and capture any market share from Ethereum. But in that challenge is opportunity for our coins to go to the moon. Hopefully. That's it. Subscribe now. I'll see you next time.